What I did first, I'm gonna go ahead and install the, the shock first. Really easy to get the shock off. All you need is a 14 millimeter wrench and maybe a crescent wrench to hold this loose. I used just a 14 millimeter wrench and I was able to get this nut off. On the bottom of the shock, you can see right here, on the reverse side it's uh, two 12 millimeter bolts. You can get them from the underside. You're just going to remove both of those and the shock slides straight out. When putting on the, the new shock, it's easiest to remove the dust cover. Then it gives you the proper room to go ahead and slide this in here because I couldn't get it in with the dust cover on there. Once you have it in, you can actually let it sit there. And then we're going to slide this on top. I can't really do it. There we go. This is going to slide up through there, but first you need to put one of the little rubber bushings on. There's the first one. The next step after installing the shock, we need to get these two 17 millimeter bolts removed. I already did the top one. Get the caliper taken off. And the second one is this one right here. That'll let you remove the caliper completely. After you have the two bolts removed, I actually brought a bucket out. That way I could slide off the caliper and rest it on here. That way I'm not putting any kind of stress on the brake line. Next step, you need to get off the little dust cover. I use a hammer with a screwdriver, hit it a couple times, and then just slowly pry it off. The next step, I already pulled the cotter pin. It was a uh, slid through the hub off this little cap and then the nut as well. The nut was actually loose uh, on this one. This is a 30 millimeter nut. In case uh, yours isn't loose, it shouldn't have been loose. And then when you're pulling this off, make sure you hold the bearing in there so it doesn't come off. Pull all together, the bearing is still in there as well. And we'll get back to that and install that in a little bit. Next, you're gonna want to remove two cotter pins, one and two. Remove both of these nuts, also remove both of these nuts, and that'll allow the dust shield to come off. Before removing these two bolts, which are connected to these nuts completely, make sure you just leave one in because you're gonna need it to get off the tie rod end. This whole thing moves as one assembly together. So what I did, I just left it on there, put a nut on it, took the cotter pin out, and then get the 19 millimeter a socket and ratchet. Go ahead and bust that off. And it's gonna be stuck in there, but I have a ball joint separator that I'm gonna use. There's my three quarter inch ball joint separator. Put that on. And we're gonna start tightening it up. That'll pop out the ball joint for us. Without having to use the hammer to bang on any ends. There you go. Now go ahead and remove the nut. Pull these out and we can pull that piece out which connects the knuckle to the actual spindle to the tie rod end. We actually will not be reusing these pieces as well. The new uh, spindle has uh, the actual tie rod end uh, piece built into it. Next what you need to do, remove both of these uh, cotter pins also get the nuts off and once we do that I'm actually doing a ball joint flip as well I'll go through that next that's the next process I'll do because once I have this off both the uh, ball joints will be free and I can go ahead and move this one to the top slide this one on top as well when I remove my nuts the bottom one was a 22 the top one was a 19 millimeter on the opposite side they were both 22 I think this ball joint had been replaced though but uh, this is it after I got the spindle off. What we're doing here, just remove 
all the hardware that attaches the upper ball joint. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove it and it's gonna rest it's gonna rest on top of the upper control arm now. I'm hoping I don't have clearance issues with this weird nipple here, but I think it should be okay. And here that one is finished. And the ball joint used to rest under the control arm, now it's on top. I added lock washers, this didn't have any. So I added some lock washers in there, just for a little added uh, security. For the lower ball joint, you're gonna wanna remove both of these bolts. These attach uh, the radius rod to the front cross member. And then we're also going to remove one, two, and three. That way we can get this ball joint up on top as well. We are going to reverse these first two bolts. We're going to put these two bolts on top, and then we're going to put this bracket on the bottom now as well. The only reason we do that is because the thickness of the ball joint. When it lays here, this doesn't rest flush anymore in mounting against the lower control arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out and then I'll show you what I'm ball joint. I think you'd see it. See how it has like the raised casting marks? When I was trying to lay that on here, it had the front sticking up. It like wouldn't lay flush. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grind it down. Here it is after I grinded it down. Grind it down flat. That way it sits on here nice and flush now. And here it is, the finished ball joint flip. As you can see, I just move the joint on top of the lower, lower control arm now. Swap those two with the little bracket down there instead. And it's start to, it's time for the reassembly of the new spindle. Get your new uh, Belltech hub on. Get both these tightened up and uh, go ahead and put on new cotter pins. Next, go ahead and put on your dust shield. These two were part of the original assembly. My kit didn't include these two bolts. I actually have a bunch of extra nuts and bolts. I found two that were the same thread pitch. I used the original washers that were on there and just tighten those up. Looks like it does hit the tie rod in, but uh, I'll be able to just bend that out. Once I actually put this in there to hold it in place, I'll be able to just uh, bend this forward a little bit. Not that I think it'll affect it, but I'm just going to bend it away from uh, the end right there a little bit. Next, go ahead and uh, lube up the new spindle. I used some uh, multi-purpose grease or, and wheel bearing lubricant is what it's considered. I think that'll do the job then. What you're going to want to do next, the belt tech instruction said you need to spin the tie rod in about four to four and a half times. That way you can get your wheels straight. I guess uh, the alignment is going to be completely off now. I do plan on having it aligned, uh, not today, but my next day off. I'm not going to drive a truck until then anyway and uh, have it professionally aligned. But they say you need to loosen these up, spin the tie rod in a little bit and just kind of eyeball it. So that way it looks kind of straight. Uh, if you were looking at where it was before you started all this, uh, maybe just try to kind of keep it similar to where that was. After you got your tie rod adjusted, go ahead and put your caliper back on and the front we're is going to move on to the rear. Rear's a lot easier. It's a matter of just putting some blocks in between here. I'm going to change out my shocks first. Looks like all I have to do is take off the bottom mounting point and the top mounting point. So let's get one of those. All right, I got the rears on. Really easy. This is my first time lowering a truck. And these were super easy. All you gotta do is two 14 millimeter bolts. Little trick, put this under, underneath the solid axle. That way you can lift it up or down because this was just slightly off. I lifted it a little bit, was able to slide uh, the bottom of the shock right on. And both of them are on now. I'm gonna get to working on the blocks next. The next step, we're gonna take off all four of these 19 millimeter nuts on the end of the U-bolts. We're gonna go ahead and do that for both sides. Before I was about to put my blocks on, fortunately, I had to widen up uh, the holes on the centering blocks. If you look under my truck, there's no way that, the, that this one was going to fit onto there. So I had to drill a couple of widened bits fit it on there. I might need to actually do a little more. No, this one's probably good. 
but I had to open that up a little bit, which kind of was a pain in the butt. Go ahead and get your blocks into place. Passenger side, excuse me, driver side, passenger side. Next up is the U-bolts. And we'll get these uh, all bolted up and we'll be done. Alright, I got this one on. Not fully tightened. Um, I did have to go back and take off the bottom of the shock. That way I can get this plate to line up. It was easier to get the U-bolts all lined up with this plate. So I went ahead and did that. I'll just put the shock back on right now and be able to adjust it. Finish up that side and I'm done. And that's it. Got the shocks back on. Both of the three inch lowering blocks on everything's good to go we're gonna lower the truck take it for a little drive 